Good afternoon, everyone. ITEC India welcomes all the participants for today's regional distance learning seminar session. Today's topic is advanced disease management in PLHIV and prevention of opportunistic infections. Today's speaker is Dr. Rajib Day. Dr. Rajib Day is working with ITEC India. We welcome you, sir, for today's session and request you to start the session. Good afternoon, everybody. So today's session is uh, on advanced HIV disease management in PLHIV in the first half and in the second half, uh, prevention of opportunistic infections. So coming to the first one, that is advanced HIV disease management. Uh, the, uh, the objectives of the session are that we will be able to define what is advanced HIV disease in adult and children and justify the need for advanced HIV disease management and uh, to know the components of packages of advanced HIV disease management. Now, the first question is why we are talking about advanced HIV disease management. We need to know the reason why is that in 2020, 2020 the event target of uh, reducing the HIV related death uh, to less than 5 lakhs was missed globally. And there, uh, in that year, 6 lakhs 80,000 HIV related deaths happened. and. Uh, Despite of uh, increase in uh, major scale up of ART services in ART centers throughout the world, we missed it. So naturally, we need to know, need to think about what is preventing us from reaching that even target of uh, AIDS related mortality less than uh, five lakhs. So to know that, first of all, we know from previous evidences that uh, early detection of HIV and uh, uh, initiation of ART early is the key to reduce death. Now, what happens if the patient present late in the uh, ART centers? They come with uh, advanced HIV, uh, advanced immune suppression with the low CD4 count at presentation, and there is a more severe wise and a poor quality of life. And in addition to that, when the patient comes with advanced HIV disease, there is suboptimal response to ART, leading to poorer prognosis and increased mortality. This again gives rise to high rate of transmission to spouse and sexual partners and, and to infants. Now to detect early and to start treatment gradually in India also, we have shifted from cutoff CD4 of 200 in uh, 2005 to gradually to 350 to 500. And now we, are, uh, we have adopted a test all policy just like uh, the rest of the world. In other parts of the world, they have implemented treat-all policy in 2016, but in India, we have started in 2017. Now, if we think what else we can do to reduce the mortality, because we are providing, because of robust uh, up, upscaling of the ART services in different parts of uh, the world, still we are missing it. So what else we can do? So different studies were done, conducted, by WHO, for example, a meta-analysis was done. And in that analysis, they have found out that uh, people with advanced immunosuppression with a CD4 count of less than 2,000 cells per cubic millimeter at baseline had 50% higher rate, higher mortality than those PLHIV with the CD4 count of more than 2,000 at the time of, AR, more than 200 at the time of ART initiation. Now, since, that presentation in the ART services, starting ART late, gives rise to a high rate of mortality. And uh, this high uh, presenting late in the ART services is uh, not restricted to middle income or low income group countries. It is found everywhere. So for example, in South Africa with a robust ART services, 33% of people presented to uh, ART centers for initiation of ART with a CD4 count of less than 200 cells per cubic millimeter and 20% with CD4 less than 100. And this uh, late presentation may be as high as 70% also. So if we look at the prevalence of uh, late presentation, we find that uh, irrespective of the solvency of a country, whether it is a low income country, lower middle income or upper middle income country or high income country, it is similar in uh, all the uh, countries. And in 46 countries, it is found that 31% of people present to ART center with advanced HIV disease. And in them, if we consider the male female uh, prevalence, male present later than female. 
So this is this was the global perspective. Now in the Indian perspective, we have an estimated 2.3 million PLHIV with a national HIV prevalence of 0.22% in the adult population. And recent estimates from middle income settings suggest 30 to 40% PLHIV have a CD4 count of less than 200 cells per cubic millimeter at the time of uh, ARD initiation at baseline, and 20% have a CD4 count less than 100 cells per cubic millimeter. So what we can do to prevent this death. So to know that, we need to know that we have done significant thing, we have achieved significantly, uh, starting from a median CD4 count of 117 in 2005, which gradually went up to 274 in the year 2018. But still then we are losing many patients because of advanced HIV diseases. Now, if we know the spectrum of uh, CD4, uh, prevalence in different groups of patients, we find that 35% of patients in India present with a CD4 count of less than 200, 26 between 200 to less than 350, and 18% between 350 to less than 500, and 21% most more than 500 uh, cells per cubic millimeter. So our focus here today is on the first 35% who come late with the advanced immunosuppression with a CD4 count of 200 cells per cubic millimeter. Now, uh, since these people come late, so let us uh, define what we mean by advanced HIV disease. So for adult, adolescent, and children above five years of age, advanced HIV disease is defined as a uh, baseline CD4 count of less than 200 cells per cubic millimeter or WHO stage three or stage four conditions. And these include both ARD naive and uh, return to treatment, that is the LFUs. Who started treatment earlier, then they went, they became LFU and has come back again. Then in these two group of people, newly registered ART patients and those who have returned back to treatment after after becoming LFU, we are going to implement, categorize them as whether having advanced disease or not. Now, for all children younger than five years of age, even though they are clinically stable, if they are not receiving ART we categorize them in as uh, having advanced HIV diseases. Now, if we strictly go by the uh, HIV, uh, WHO clinical staging, we'll be missing a large number of people who are having uh, advanced immunosuppression. And for that matter, doing a CD4 count test at the baseline is very essential. Now, what happens uh, if the person present with uh, advanced immunosuppression with advanced HIV diseases we expect that the risk of OIs would be more, opportunistic infection would be more, and there are chances of high uh, incidence of a high iris, that is immune reconstitution inflammatory syndromes, and AIDS-related and non-AIDS-related comorbidities, which leads to frequent uh, need of monitoring at the ART center, and the patient has to visit ART centers frequently, leading to high burden, economic burden to PLHIV and also on the healthcare system. Now, there are different studies uh, to find out the uh, opportunistic infection, which gave rise to high mortality in uh, PLHIV, presenting with advanced HIV diseases. And the summary of this uh, can be found in this slide, where we have seen that the first uh, cause of uh, death is tuberculosis, both in adult and children. And in the second number, it is severe bacterial infection, both in adult and children. And cryptococcal meningitis in the third position in adults, while PCP, that is pneumocystitis carinii pneumonia, which is now known as pneumocystitis strawberry pneumonia in children. And in the fourth place, it is toxoplasmosis for adults and diarrheal diseases for children. And uh, in the fifth, last one for adults, it is uh, PCP, while malnutrition and wasting is in the fifth position in children. Now, after knowing the uh, advanced disease, uh, advanced HIV diseases, there after knowing the definition of it and the causes why the patient dies, now what else we can do to prevent that? Now, there were different studies. Based on these studies, uh, they have intervened with uh, uh, cotrimoxazole, vitamin B6, isoniazide, fluconazole, erythromycin, albendazole, and uh, in other group, they did the rapid ART initiation, crack screening, that is uh, cryptococcal antigen screening, and adherence support visit for four weeks. And they found that both of the, in both the studies, these are cost-effective, and this reduces uh, death. If we summarize that 
these two studies, then uh, there are 28% reduction in depth and improved adherence at six months. Uh, and TB incidence was reduced by 28%, cryptococcal disease by 62%, and hospitalization by 17% in the enhanced prophylaxis group. And in the other, 27% reduced death rate and reduction in incident morbidity, reduction in hospitalization. So the evidences uh, point to the fact that it is possible in the middle income countries also uh, to administer advanced HIV disease management. Now, let us know what are the package, the components of uh, different uh, uh, advanced HIV disease management. The package uh, is based on evidence that were generated by different uh, meta-analysis and uh, all those uh, 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 studies that we went through earlier. Now, first is screening, treatment, and or prophylaxis for major opportunistic infection, then repeat ART initiation, and intensified adherence support. All these are aimed at reducing morbidity and mortality amongst PLHIV with advanced HIV diseases. Now, let us summarize the components of advanced HIV disease management package. The first is screening for active TB disease and prompt initiation of anti-TB treatment. And if we can exclude TB, then we should start IPT as early as possible. Then systematic screening for uh, cryptococcal antigen Fluconazole preemptive therapy for cryptococcal antigen and positive uh, people without evidence of meningitis. So here, what happens? This cryptococcal antigen is not included in our national program as of now. So we can start. Uh, uh, we. Uh, we can start uh, uh, primary prophylaxis if the person is uh, having CD4 count of less than 100 or he is very sick. We can start uh, 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 cryptococcal prevention with fluconazole 100 milligram once a day. Now, the screening for quatrimoxal prophylaxis, rapid initiation of ART once the risk of IDC is assessed and adapted adherence support and intensive follow-up. We will be going through each of the component in detail. So let us see how what is done under screening. As we all know, all people visiting ART center is subjected to four, four symptom screening of tuberculosis. If found positive, then we go for CBNAT or TBLAM. Although TBLAM is not there uh, in the program, but it is done when CD4 count is less than 200 cells and uh, is uh, done both in adults and adolescents and children and the cryptococcal antigen screening though not there in our program but we we are supposed to do it when it is less than 200 cells for adult and adolescent but it is not advocated in children because the chances of cryptococcal antigen is less in children then prophylaxis and preemptive treatment quatrimoxal prophylaxis we know that in the national program if the CD4 count is less than 350 cells per cubic millimeter, or the patient is in uh, WHO clinical stage three or four, then we start a uh, cell prophylaxis. And uh, uh, TB preventive therapy is uh, initiated in all the uh, PLHIV, whether it is adult, adolescent, or children. And uh, fluconazole preemptive therapy is done when CRAG antigen is positive without signs and symptoms of meningitis. It is for adult and adolescent, it is not advocated for children. Then ART initiation. Here we are to go for rapid ART initiation with any CD4 count, both in adult, adolescent and children. And in cases uh, of uh, meningitis, deferred uh, initiation of ART is uh, recommended. Now, adopted adherence support uh, means the tailored counseling to different PLHIB groups. So, for example, in case of uh, CLHIB or uh, ALHIB, we need to consider their uh, timings, when it, uh, school timings, and when it is uh, easier for them to visit ART center and uh, what are the different challenges faced by them. So, accordingly, we need to tailor the counseling as per the uh, particular PLHIB group. The now, this is the flowchart of uh, uh, flowchart of uh, HIV enrollment into PL, uh, PL advanced HIV disease and its management. So it is a clumsy one, a very clumsy. So let us divide it into a few, uh, few more slides as follows. When the patient presents to ART center, care coordinator goes for forest symptom screening. Thereafter, the patient goes to counselor, in an, and in addition to forest symptom screening, she will 
go for other uh, signs and symptoms of severe uh, illness like uh, headache, difficulty in breathing, chest pain, hemoptysis, paralysis, seizure. Headache uh, and uh, headache is for uh, those neuro OIs and difficulty is breathing. As you know, it is it is found in uh, PCP. Chest pain, hemoptysis are found in uh, tuberculosis. Paralysis, seizure, etc. are found in CNS uh, OI. And uh, if whether the patient is having CD4 count of less than 200, there is advanced HIV disease or viral load of more than 1,000 copies per ml. At baseline, we are not uh, measuring any viral load in India as per the national guideline. This viral load uh, is for those PLHIV who became LFU and uh, entered again in the treatment. So after counselor, the patient goes to nurse. This is the routine flow of patient in an ART center. So nurse, in addition to forest screening, she goes for uh, other symptom, uh, uh, asking for other symptoms like uh, difficulty breathing, chest pain, hemoptysis, headache, unable to work, unaided, paralysis, seizure, difficulty in talking, and altered sense to be. The uh, nurse, in addition to this, measures the temperature, whether it is 39 degrees centigrade or more, with headache, respiratory rate of 30 or more per minute, and heart rate of 120 bits per minute or more, and oxygen saturation, whether it is less than 90% or not. Thereafter, the patient goes to a uh, medical officer who confirms the signs and symptoms of serious illness, presence or absence of uh, forest symptoms, and confirms advanced HIV disease. If the patient is having serious uh, signs and symptoms of serious illness, then the MO refers immediately the patient to the expert in the institution, parent institution, or to higher centers, for example, ART plus, UOE, or PCOE, if those facilities are not available in the parent center. And if the patient is not having any Sinus and serious illness, bacterial involvement, or uh, the patient is not in a advanced HIV disease, then the patient is offered the standard package of care. And if this patient is having uh, is having advanced HIV disease, then we go for screening, diagnosis and treatment of OIs, screening for TB using TB lamp, NAT, chest X-ray, and other tests. Same day, serum crack uh, screening is also done if it is available in the program, then rapid CPT initiation in new cases and TPT in the absence of active TB, rapid ART initiation in new cases and intensive counseling and follow-up. So initial in more detail, all the PLHIV visiting to the ART center are to be uh, screened for advanced HIV diseases, particularly those who are newly registered or treatment naive and those people who have returned after becoming LFU. So staff nurse go for forest screening and the uh, signs and symptoms of serious illness in the form of temperature, respiratory rate of more than 30, SpO2 less than 90, heart rate 120 or more, and unable to work, and altered sensorium, seizure, paralysis, etc. If these things are there, the nurse immediately first check the patient to the MO who confirms the presence or absence of serious illness. And if the patient is seriously ill, the patient is referred it, uh, properly either in the institution or out of the institution based on the availability of uh, specialty departments. And in the absence of signs and symptoms of serious illness, the patient is subject further for evaluation of other components like screening of TB and screening of meningitis. Now, how to screen tuberculosis? TB is the leading cause of mortality. Hence, it's uh, important to screen all PLHIV and diagnosis of TB is difficult as immunosuppression worsens because the extra pulmonary manifestation of tuberculosis becomes more uh, prominent and more evident when the CD4 count falls. ART should be initiated in all PLHIV with TB regardless of CD4 count. However, the timing is different. For example, if there is an involvement of the meninges or the brain, then the initiation of ART to be deferred uh, uh, deferred uh, uh, to at least four weeks, but within eight weeks of initiation of ATT, that is anti-tubercular treatment. And for those PLHIV who are having tuberculosis other than uh, CNS, we can start uh, ART within two weeks of initiation of ART. Now, assess for symptoms of meningitis, because this is important because uh, on the basis of whether the patient is having meningitis or not, we are, uh, we are going to time our ART initiation. So patients should be screened for fever, 
chronic severe headache, altered mental status like confusion, strange behavior, reduced consciousness, and other neurological problems like seizure, paralysis, difficulty in talking, rapid deterioration of vision, and unable to walk unaided. Then cryptococcal disease is an OI that occurs primarily among people with advanced HIV disease, and the most common form is the cryptococcal meningitis. So it is very, very important to look for signs and symptoms of meningitis whenever the patient comes with advanced HIV diseases. Now, prophylaxis for prevention of uh, opportunistic infection. Quatrimoxazole prophylaxis is provided to all with a CD4 count of uh, less than 350 or anybody who is coming with this WHO clinical stage 3 or 4 conditions. And IPT is given to prevent uh, tuberculosis. Here it is called as IPT because we are using isoniazide in the national program to prevent tuberculosis. But basically it is a TPT, that is uh, TB preventive therapy. Since we are using uh, isoniazide, so it is uh, written as IPT. And it's given to all PLHIV who are 4S negative and those who do not have active TB to prevent latent tuberculosis from progressing to active TB. Now, fluconazole preemptive treatment to prevent the development of cryptococcal meningitis if CRAG positive without meningitis or fluconazole primary pro prophylaxis is given when CRAG screening test is negative is not available and CD4 count is less than 100. Here, uh, for secondary prophylaxis, we are using fluconazole 200 milligram per day and for primary prophylaxis, we are using uh, fluconazole 100 milligram per day. So, in uh, summary, if we see the uh, people, PLHAB, uh, coming with uh, advanced HIV disease have many challenges, like they have multiple uh, treatment molecules to take, in, to take, so high pill burden, which leads to a uh, high chance of drug-drug interaction, more severe side effects, and um, it also requires a frequent visit to ART center, requiring increased travel cost and expenses. Now, what is the solution? Solution is in uh, uh, tailored counseling, treatment literacy, treat and supporting treatment through the uh, treatment supporter, peer supporter, and outreach, uh, outreach activity through care support center, and intensified adherence support. So, uh, as uh, in the previous slide, we have come to know that uh, patients who are suffering from uh, severe illnesses are to be referred to higher center or in the specialty department of the parent institution. So we expect that these complicated cases would be managed as indoor patient. After the stabilization of the patient, these patients are to be referred back immediately to the ART center, continuation of ART and or OI medication as indicated. And they should be linked to appropriate differentiated service care in order to uh, facilitate the retention in care and ensure good uh, treatment adherence. So uh, in the component of, uh, in the package, component of the package of ART, advanced HIV disease management, we have seen rapid uh, ART initiation also prevents uh, 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 mortality and morbidity. So rapid uh, ART initiation here means that the initiation of ART within seven days from the diagnosis of HIV. But this is not a hard and fast rule that it has to be done within seven days. Depending on different kinds of uh, uh, opportunistic infection, this may be delayed. Say, for example, in meningitis, as we have seen earlier, that in TBM or cryptococcal meningitis, it has to be delayed. Otherwise, uh, in we start, we will try to start uh, ART as early as possible, start within seven days. And if the patient is uh, ready, to accept uh, ART, then it can be started in the first day if there is no contraindication. So readiness uh, of the patient is uh, assessed through counseling, readiness, uh, preparedness counseling. The patient need to be uh, uh, patient need to know that he has to continue the medicine for whole of the life, and uh, uh, he has to take it on the same time of the, each day. And there are some side effects which will go with time, minor side effects. And uh, there are uh, uh, see, uh, there are various type of drug interactions. So before uh, taking uh, any vitamin and all, he has he has to consult doctor. And once the patient is ready for that, uh, for the we can start uh, ART on the same day. It is on the very first day also. So, 
Now, what we achieve by starting ART on the same day or rapid ART initiation through different ART cities world over, it has been seen that if ART is initiated within uh, seven days or rapid ART initiation done or the same day ART initiation is done, the retention at care has improved, uh, improved retention is care and viral suppression is also better at 12 months. Now, people with no contradiction to rapid ART initiation should be informed properly of, about the benefits of ART, should be offered rapid ART initiation with seven days of registration and ART initiation after appropriate preparedness counseling that we have already discussed. Now, people with very low CD4 count should have rapid ART initiation and it is very, very important for this group of people. And for CLHIV, we know any CLHIV less than five years of age is considered to be having advanced HIV disease in the absence of ART, even though he is stable. So rapid ART initiation within seven days of registration is very, very important. And rapid ART initiation after appropriate preparedness counseling. This is very important in children because their caregivers also need to be convinced about the need of that uh, early ART and continuation throughout life. Now, people who have no clinical signs and symptoms of TB or otherwise, and whose uh, CRAG test is negative, should be initiated on ART on the same day in combination with other package of prophylaxis. That is, CPT, IPT, and um, ART can be uh, started simultaneously. People with advanced HIV disease require close follow-up because they will be on uh, many molecules, pharmacological molecules, and there are chances of drug-drug interactions and the prevalence of IDs is also more in patients who are uh, having advanced HIV diseases. So they need uh, close follow-up after initiation of ART. If anybody misses appointment, then he should be rapidly traced by phone or through home visit. And where face-to-face -face contact is not possible, distant contact through telephone and other means to be done through a community health worker or home-based caregiver should be considered with consent of the client. So it is important that before visiting a client, we should uh, seek for his uh, or her consent. Then ART staff uh, here, because we have seen that with that uh, advanced HIV diseases management, there are different kinds of uh, challenges these people face. So the counseling also need to be tailored to their needs and the ART staff should familiarize themselves with the concept of rapid ART, viral load monitoring, differentiated care, especially advanced disease management, and U is equal to U, that is undetectable means untransmissible. So up to now, we have completed the first uh, part of the session, advanced HIV disease management in the PLHIV. So if there is any question, you can ask me now also, or uh, after the completion of the session also, you can ask. So. Any questions? Uh, participants can unmute their mic if they have any questions related to ADM. So I think we can go ahead and take up questions at the end of the session. Okay, then. Now coming to the next topic, prevention of opportunistic infection. Uh, so opportunistic infections are intercurrent infections that occur in people living with HIV. And OIs are the major causes of morbidity and mortality among PLHIV. And most in the case of advanced HIV diseases. PLHIV tend to contract all, uh, OI depending on the, uh, during the disease, which mostly corroborates with the CD4 count. So there are trends based on the CD4 count that we can expect or guess uh, the type of OI that the person can have. And most of these OIs have uh, uh, medicines to prevent the occurrence of this OI and ART itself can prevent many of the OIs. So if we go through this diagram, where on the Y axis there is a CD4 count and on the X axis it is time, we see with the progression of the HIV disease, the CD4 count goes down gradually and uh, the the different kinds of OIs also occur uh, uh, as per the uh, CD4 count. If you go on to uh, the lower side of the graph, we find that the severe, most severe OIs tend to occur when the CD4 count goes down below 100. These are toxoplasmosis, cryptococcus, cryptosporidiosis, PML, CMB, and MAC. While PCP, esophageal candidiasis, mycocoitinous herpes occur with a CD4 count of less than 200. And regarding the first three 
OIs, herpes zoster, tuberculosis, and oral candidiasis, they do not, they can, uh, they can occur at any time with any CD4 count. Now, coming to prevention of OIs, we know there are uh, primary prof uh, prophylaxis and secondary prophylaxis in, uh, in the case of uh, PLHIV. So we use cotrimoxazole for the prevention of uh, PCP, that is pneumocystitis jovere pneumonia, and isoniazide for the prevention of tuberculosis, and fluconazole for cryptococcal prevention if the CD4 count is less than 100, because we don't have correct test. So we will be going for uh, primary prophylaxis with fluconazole 100 milligram per day to uh, as a primary prophylaxis. Now in secondary prophylaxis, we use the same cotrimoxazole to prevent recurrence of PCP. That is the person has already developed uh, PCP and after the completion of the treatment, we continue uh, uh, cotrimoxazole prophylaxis till the patient has a, a CD4 count of more than uh, 350 in two occasions separated by six months. And for uh, pre uh, prevention of recurrence of TB, we go for isoniazide. And to prevent the recurrence of cryptococcal, uh, cryptococcal infection, we continue fluconazole as secondary prophylaxis. Now, let us go into the detail of cotrimoxazole preventive therapy. Cotrimoxazole is a combination of sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim. And um, for uh, prophylaxis, the recommended dose is double strength, that is 800 milligram of sulfamethoxazole and 160 milligram of trimethoprim orally in adults and adolescents. And this is very effective in preventing PCP, toxoplasmosis, bacterial pneumonias, nocardosis, isosporiosis. And in case of allergy to cotrimoxazole, we can go for alternatives like Dapson 100 milligram once daily to prevent PCP and toxoplasmosis, or we can go for desensitization. And in desensitization, we, uh, we can attempt desensitization if the reaction is, uh, hypersensitive reaction is uh, uh, grade three or less. In uh, severe hypersensitivities with uh, grade four, we should not uh, try for desensitization. Now, uh, when to start uh, CPT prophylaxis, we all know that anybody who is having a CD4 count of less than 350 cells or is in WHO clinical stage three or four, we should start uh, uh, CPT, cotrimoxazole profi prophylaxis treatment then timing of initiation of cotrimoxazole in relation to ART. First of all, we, should, we need to start uh, cotrimoxazole prophylaxis, and then once the CPT is tolerated, then we should start for ART. And this can be timed with the uh, preparedness counseling because after the registration of the patient, we can start the ART only when the patient is prepared, which need uh, preparedness counseling. So during this phase, we can administer CPT, and once it is tolerated and the preparedness counseling is also over, we can start ART. Now, secondary prophylaxis of CPT is given after successful completion of uh, PCP, pneumocystitis, carinine pneumonia, until CD4 count is 350 cells per cubic millimeter in two occasions done six months apart. Now, dose of cotrimoxazole is 800 milligram of sulfamethoxazole and 160 milligram of dimethoprim, which comes at uh, DS double strength dose of cotrimoxazole. Now, restarting of cotrimoxazole prof prophylaxis is indicated in PLHIV whose CD4 count is less than 350 due to either ART treatment failure or due to immunosuppressive conditions like diabetes mellitus or due to administration of long-term immunosuppressive drugs like, as in the case of cancers or uh, different uh, uh, arthritis. So in those cases, the CD4 can, the count can go down to 350 and we have to start restart uh, CPT and uh, can only be stopped when the CD4 count reaches more than 350 cells per cubic millimeter on two different occasions tested six months apart with an ascending trend and devoid of any WHO clinical stage three or four conditions. Now, regarding cotrimoxyl prophylaxis, if the patient reports a history of hypersensitivity, then we can go for desensitization if the patient has a reaction of grade three or less. In case of grade four, as I said earlier, we cannot go for uh, desensitization and we should make it a habit to write it down prominently in the white card of the patient so that if the patient require treatment with uh, CPT later, later, then whether to restart or not. If the patient had the grading of three or less, 
then this can be utilized later on after doing desensitization. And if the desensitization fails, there is the patient again devel develops hypersensitivity reaction, then we should wait for the period uh, during which the rash will disappear. Then we can put the patient on Dapsone 100 milligram per day in, in the place of CPT. The dose of desensitization is very simple with the uh, suspension of sulfur methoxazole 200 milligram and time methoprim 40 milligram per ml. We can start with 2 ml first day, second day 4, third day 6, fourth day 8 ml, and on fifth day single strand, and on sixth day onwards double strand. But it is better to have this chart on the table. Uh, we can, because uh, at times our memory can fail us. So, indications are that all HIV exposed in children for six weeks of age, because CPT started after six weeks of age, we all know, and for HIV exposed children, and to be continued till the patient is proved to be negative. That is, till we exclude HIV, the patient should continue uh, getting CPT from starting from six weeks of life. And for all HIV infected children, we are to continue CPT up to five years, irrespective of statistical count or percentage. And beyond five years, it is just like adults. That is, the, if the patient is having CD4 count of more than 350 cells in two occasions separated by six months and without any stage three stage four condition, then we can stop it. Then all HIV infected children more than five years, as I said, uh, should not have any stage three stage four condition and CD4 count should have. 350 cells per cubic millimeter on two occasions separated by six months. And we can use it as secondary profile exit after completion of PCP in less than five years old patient. We should not stop it till five years. And after five years, we have to decide whether to stop it if the CD4 count is more than 350 cells per cubic millimeter in two occasions separated by six months. And if the patient is not having any stage three or stage four condition, we can stop it. So dose of uh, CPT for children is also there. So we should keep this table on our, uh, this uh, dose chart on our table and routinely we should consult it because uh, again, the memory can fail us at any time, particularly when we are uh, discharging our duty with uh, high number of people. If the footfall is high in uh, center, it is frequently we miss that. And we should uh, consult this table whenever we, may, uh, uh, whenever we prescribe CPT to children. Then for cryptococcal diseases, Uh, for if the person is having, say, cryptococcal disease, the most common form of cryptococcal disease we know is cryptococcal meningitis. So in meningitis, uh, what we do, we do for uh, lumbar puncture and we study the CSF for culture, microscopy, or for detection of Krag antigen or uh, India ink mount. And diagnosis is to be confirmed when cryptococcus is identified in the CSF or in the CNS tissue. Serum Krag is usually positive in both meningeal and non-meningeal infection. And serum crack may be present weeks or months prior to the development of symptoms. A positive serum crack should prompt a lumbar puncture to rule out meningeal diseases. But as of now, we don't have cracks. So basically, till crack is made available in the program, we are to go for uh, primary prevention of cryptococcal meningitis if the CD4 count is less than 100. Now, prophylaxis. If uh, the person is having CD4 count less than 100. I already told that it is fluconazole 100 milligram and per day and when to stop when the patient is adherent to ART for, uh, with more than 95% adherence and free from cryptococcal disease. And fluconazole is taken for at least one year and CD4 count is uh, 100 or more and uh, viral load is less than 1000 copies per ml. That is suppressed uh, plasma viral load. Now, for secondary profile axis, it is recommended after two weeks of uh, induction treatment and uh, eight weeks of consolidation phase, we can go for uh, uh, maintenance phase with fluconazole 200 milligram per day in case of adult and six milligram per kg per day for children. And uh, the criteria for discontinuation is the same. That is, uh, there should not be any evidence of cryptococcal disease. Person should have a, a adherence to ART more than 95% and fluconazole has taken more than at least uh, one year and CD4 count is more than equal to 100 or suppressed plasma viral load, then we can stop the uh, fluconazole prophylaxis. Now coming to TPT. 
is administered to individual with, uh, with the idea to treat the latent TB infection before it, is, before it goes to become active TB. Isonizide, as you know, that it is the most effective antimicrobial TB drug that protect against progression of latent TB infection to active TB. And it also prevents TB reinfection post exposure to an open case of TB, that is reinfection, superinfection, nosocomial transmission uh, are not prevented, but uh, TB, uh, uh, it also prevents TB reinfection post exposure to an open case of TB. Now, IPD doesn't promote uh, INS resistance when it is used to treat uh, uh, latent tuberculosis uh, uh, infection because in latent TB, the number of bacilli are very less and are dividing very slowly. So this doesn't result, unlikely to result in uh, drug-resistant mutants. All adults and adolescents living with HIV who are 4S negative should receive uh, IPT for six months. And any children more than 12 months of age without any sign and symptoms of tuberculosis should receive IPT for six months. An infant less than 12 months of age living with HIV who are in contact with a person with TB and who are unlikely to have active TB on the basis of a clinical evaluation should be put on uh, IPT or TPT. If there is any doubt about the status TB status of the patient, IPT should be delayed. Now, what are the contraindications of IPT? If there is any active TB disease, active hepatitis, signs and symptoms of peripheral neuropathy, such as persistent tingling, numbness, burning, and patient is a heavy, alco uh, heavy alcoholic or symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. Now, concurrent use of other hepatotoxic drug drugs also can, uh, in, in this scenario also, we have to delay the IPT and contact with MDR TB case because IPT will not be uh, effective in uh, in the case of MDRTB or PLHIB who have completed uh, DRTB treatment, we should not start IPT. So these are the uh, uh, signs of liver disease, we should not start. Neuropathy, we should not start. Tenderness in the right upper quadrant, that is uh, the sign of hepatitis, we should not uh, start IPT. And wherever av available, should go for LFT or at least ALT before starting uh, IPT. And in the absence of LFT or ALT, IPT should not be delayed. It can be started based if the patient is asymptomatic on clinical examination. So IPT is given in the form of isoniazide 300 milligram with pyridoxine 50 milligram per day for six months. Now in the absence of pyridoxine, uh, IPT should not be withhold, it should be given. And if possible, if there are multivitamins or B-complex available, with the requisite uh, amount of pyridoxine, then we can prescribe it if it is available in the general health system. So these are the, again, doses of uh, 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 INH. So we it, it is better to keep it uh, ready on the table for ready reference whenever we need. Then follow-up. All four is positive. For us, negative patients with uh, should be assessed by SMO or MO to determine eligibility for IPT. And IPT should be considered for both on ART or pre ART patient if found uh, negative on for us symptom screening. IPT drugs must be provided monthly, that is 30 tablets to all eligible patients. And for us screening should be done for all patients on ART or pre ART who are on IPT during every visit to the ART center to exclude active TB. In case a patient becomes uh, forest positive during the IPT course, or he or she should be investigated for TB, and if found positive, IPT should be stopped and appropriate anti-TB treatment should be initiated. Now, patients who were previously treated for TB, that is secondary prophylaxis, all CLHIB, PLHIB, who have successfully completed treatment for TB disease earlier should receive INH for six months. And com combined use of IPT with ART is recommended for all CLHIB or PLHIB, regardless of degree of immunosuppression, previous treatment for TB, pregnancy. ART should not be delayed while starting or completing a course of IPT. That means we can co administer uh, IPT and uh, ART simultaneously also. If, uh, in the case of pregnancy also, if a person qualifies for uh, uh, IPT, we should uh, provide them with IPT because it doesn't have any 
teratogenicity in omen and it can also it is safely can be given while the patient is breastfeeding if a baby is born to a microbiologically confirmed tb mother we should assess the new for, for newborn baby for active tb non specific features of tb are fever low birth weight hepatosplenomegaly irritability and feeding difficulties infants is less than 12 months of age living with hiv who are in contact with a person with tb and who are unlikely to have active tb on appropriate clinical evaluation or according to national guidelines should receive tb preventive therapy and now what are the contraindications the context of mdr tb and plhiv who have completed drtb treatment should not uh, get uh, ipt because it will not be effective if a patient develops tb symptoms during ipt treatment we should evaluate the patient for tb and conduct dst drug sensitivity test and based on the result of drug sensitivity test we should uh, uh, administer appropriate treatment regimen if the patient is sensitive to all the drugs then based on history of att and duration of ipt we can decide if the patient has not received any tb treatment in the past and has taken ipt for less than one month then provide the we should provide the patient with treatment as for new case if the patient has received anti tb treatment in the past or if the patient has taken ipt for more than one month then we should provide the patient with a retreatment regimen if the patient is found to have dr tb we should refer the patient to the dr tb center now if a patient has taken ipt uh, for less than one month in total and discontinued for any reason like toxicity or loss to follow up we can conduct attendance counseling and address the reason for discontinuation and we should do, go for uh, IF, icf and if asymptomatic we, we should start restart inh afresh for six month course now after taking I, ipt for more than one month if the patient has discontinued for less than three months then again we should uh, conduct adherence counseling conduct icf and if found asymptomatic for tb we should restart inh afresh to ensure that the patient completes a six month course within nine months period now after taking ipt for more than one month if the patient discontinued for more than three months or had discontinued more than once then we should not reinitiate re ipt thank you so any question till now you can ask participants can unmute their mic and ask questions so there's one question in the chat box uh, dapson is not available in government hospital uh, is there any other medication that can be given so far as the guideline is concerned we are to give dapson as an alternative but uh, 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 there are other medicines also depending on a particular case uh, we can go for other medicine if it is not available but uh, i don't know why it is not available it should be available no and it can also be procured locally if it is not available uh, in the system uh, another question sir does eptp patients are eligible for ipd prophylaxis after completion of tb treatment any tb treatment means any plhiv who is not having drtv or uh, uh, does not disqu get disqualified for uh, for reasons of non continuation for more than two attempts after consumption of uh, ipt for one month should have a uh, tpt ipt therapy for six months in their lifetime everybody should receive it unless and until there is contraindication whether it is eptp ptv whatever everybody will be put on ipt any other questions from the participants please feel free to unmute your mic sir i am dr shivkumar from mysore yes sir uh, previous guidelines were you have to start ipt after 3 months of initiation of drt mm. but now you are telling that you can simultaneously initiate yeah 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 we we because uh, it has been because all those uh, rcts and all the different studies have come up with the conclusion that uh, uh initiation of art rapid art initiation and uh, uh, ipt reduces uh, death rate so earlier there were the concern for hypersensitivity and drug drug interaction for that those three months were there but with the latest evidence uh, we found that it can be co administered also and can be started simultaneously also any chance of developing iris sir 
Yeah, it is there. That's why in the management of advanced HIV diseases, what we have recommended is close monitoring. If the person misses, we should follow the person telephonically or by sending the outreach worker. So the monitoring should be need to be very close. Another question, sir. When you yes. uh, told that a rapid initiation can be done on the same day, at the same time you mentioned that uh, CPT tolerance should also be assessed and then ART started. So we have to have some time before uh, assessing the CPT intolerance. Yeah, here what happens, rapid ART initiation means ART within seven days, right? Okay. Okay. But patient having uh, advanced uh, HIV disease who are having say TBM, tubercular meningitis, okay. even though guidelines says within seven days, are we going to start within seven days? No, we mm -hmm. are going to we are going to defer it at yes, least yes, by four weeks, right? And okay. within eight weeks, we are to going to start. So okay. case, by, case by case, we are going to do it. Now, if a person has come with a CD4 count of less than 200, and there is no sign of, uh, say, uh, uh, tuberculosis, meningitis, or severe diseases. Okay. okay, many a times you will find patient coming as low as 50, 40, 20 CD4 count, but yet they are clinically stable, right? Yes. But they belong to advanced HIV disease. In those cases, if we can exclude TB, we can start. CPT, ATT, ART on the same day if the patient is prepared. Now, preparing a patient needs some time. And patient coming with a CD4 count of less than 200, what we are going to do, we are going to investigate the patient properly. Now, investigation also needs some time. Yes. So during that time, we can start CPT, right? Yes. Because patient is having CD4 count less than 350, so we have to start CPT. So we'll start CPT, we'll conduct all investigation, test, and by the time patient become prepared for ART, we'll start. Okay, that is within seven days, but what is yeah. the same day we cannot start? Okay. Now we can start, we can, we can, if clinically the treating physician is very much confident about the absence of any tuberculosis or severe OI, even though the patient is having CD4 count of less than 200, he can start the treatment and uh, give the requisition on the same day. The patient will do the test and the with the report, if there is something else, some serious things are found in the report, then the patient will be called back again. Okay, sir. thank you. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Sir, for fluconazole uh, primary prophylaxis should be done all those with uh, crack positive or uh, CD4 less than 100, no, sir? If the CD4 is less than 100, we are going to start uh, uh, primary prophylaxis with fluconazole 100 milligram per day. That and is for one year. Yeah, yeah. And 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 the CD4 uh, and all those criteria before stopping, no? Huh, Four criteria were there. Um, we have to follow that. And program. since CRAG is not there in the program, so we have to follow this now. Only when the CRAG will be available, then we can uh, go for preemptive treatment and the secondary prof uh, primary prophylaxis. And if the patient develop uh, cryptococcal meningitis, after completion of the treatment also, you will see that there is continuation phase of fluconazole, 200 milligram per day. And we are going to stop it after one year when the CD4 count goes above 100, viral load suppressed, no signs of cryptococcal disease, and uh, patient's adherence to ART is more than 95%. So we had one case of cryptococcal meningitis, and yeah. uh, it put on amphotericin B and uh, fluconazole uh, mm -hmm. of that. But after uh, stopping fluconazole, again, he is having recurrence of uh, uh, the symptoms of uh, cryptococcal meningitis. So what was the adherence? Because many a times what happens with fluconazole, the most common uh, uh, forms of fluconazole available in the market is 150. Hmm. Okay. So many a times there is, uh, they go to pharmacist and pharmacy give them 150 milligram. Say so do not adhere to the dose prescribed. So we need to go for uh, knowing the reasons why the patient failed. It can be uh, primary resistance to fluconazole also it is possible. But then most of the time in our experience we have seen uh, the adherence is poor or the pharmacist give wrong doses. I mean, in case of 200, they will give 150 or 100. So this will also cause uh, failure of the of prevention. Can we give sir, any other uh, antifungal instead of fluconazole? Yeah, instead of fluconazole, itraconazole can also be given. But uh, itraconazole has got more uh, uh, hepatotoxicity uh, compared to fluconazole. 
So if our uh, induction phase, see, there are many things we need to assure uh, uh, ourselves before starting the secondary profile axis, whether the induction phase was complete or not, because we, we need to confirm by repeat lumbar puncture whether the uh, cryptococcus is still there in the CSF or not, Craig antigen is still positive or not, okay? So all this thing based on clinical uh, examination, based on CSF finding, we should say that yes, his induction is complete. Now let us go to uh, consolidation phase. Now after consolidation phase also, uh, we need to assure that the patient took medicine as uh, advised, that is 400 to 800 milligram. Now, again, we have seen many cases, the pharmacist give less, even though you prescribe 400 to 800, Many of the pharmacists say, no, no, it is a, something wrong has happened. Uh, so you take 150 or something like that. And many of them also advise them once a week, even though here it is daily. So we need to go through all cases separately and evaluate the case. Then if we find that the patient is failing, probably it is because of primary resistance to fluconazole. In that case, we can go for itraconazole also. But we, we need to monitor the LFT closely. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so there's one question in the chat box. If CD4 count is below 100, can we give Coptrimaxosal BD dose? Why do you need? What was the cause of uh, increasing the dose? Because prophylaxis, as you are saying, if it is not for treatment, why to go for BD dose? If we are, if you are planning to treat some disease, then we can definitely go for BD dose. But if we are going for prophylaxis, then the recommended guideline is uh, uh, double strength uh, cortimoxazole once a day only. Why to go for BD? Okay. Any more questions? Oh, sir, I don't think there are any questions. Can I quickly yes, run the... Yeah, please, please step. Good, uh, Craig, and uh, you include uh, toxo, and, uh, toxo screening also, sir, for ADM. As of now, the guideline says crypto and uh, tuberculosis. Because if you see the causes, the reasons for death, high mortality in advanced HIV disease, then the PLHIV as a whole, first is tuberculosis, then is cryptococcus. Okay. Now, uh, toxoplasmos is also there, but the ADM management uh, retains itself uh, within uh, the screening for tuberculosis, cryptococcus, the most common one, and their treatment. And we are also referring the case. Uh, serious cases to the experts. So okay. this will take care of toxo. But as of guideline, it is not included in the management of advanced HIV diseases. Okay, sir. thank you. Sir. Any more questions? Uh, so there's a question in the chat box. If CD4 count is below 100, can we use both fluconazole and CPT? Yes, we can. We can. That uh, that was said, no, if the patient, uh, this can be started simultaneously. If the patient is uh, a child less than six weeks, then we should not start CPT. But if it is uh, more than six weeks, any PLHIV, we can start simultaneously, no problem because the side effect profiles are different with the CPT and fluconazole. Uh, so meantime, I'll run the feedback poll. Uh, participants can unmute their mic and keep asking questions. The feedback poll is now visible on your screen. There are four questions in all. Please attempt all the four questions. Maran, Maran, Maran. Pardon. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, B complex iron and all are having reaction with uh, doltagravir, no? Yes, sir. That's why I said in the preparedness counseling, we had to prepare the patient. The, here is the role of the counselor. They should prepare the patient that don't take any OTC uh, medicine without consulting ART center. And when ART center is prescribing uh, cations, multivitamins, multiminerals, then we expect that the SMO will uh, tell the patient to take 
two hours before or six hours after ingestion okay. ingesting this kind of medicine is not necessary okay. you will you will advise them no because okay. we will be prescribing okay. in the morning we will give in the evening uh, early we will give yeah you can decide you can also give in the afternoon okay dolutagravir you can give in afternoon and uh, morning evening yeah. you can go for multivitamin no problem yeah. okay. so you have to decide no two two hours before or uh, six hours hour after taking the tablet yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah. thank you sir two hours in after two hours it's for you munda to before two hours than after six hours Uh, participants are requested to please attempt the feedback poll any more questions from the participants you can uh, even uh, write in the chat box requesting all the participants to please attempt the feedback poll our next session will be conducted tomorrow from 2 to 3 pm uh, thank you rajeev sir for facilitating this session and thank you to all the participants for joining the session at a short notice thank you also can we conclude this session now yes sir yes thank you yes. thank you sir thank you so much thank you everyone thank you